morning. And welcome to worship with the Community Church of Sebastopol, an open and affirming congregation in the United Church of Christ. As we begin our worship in this sacred place, we respectfully acknowledge that our church's sanctuary is located on the traditional and unceded land of the Southern Pomo and Coast Miwok peoples who have been stewarding this land for generations. Today is the 21st century, 21st century, it is the 21st century, 21st Sunday after Pentecost in the 21st century, and we continue our annual pledge drive with the theme, Community Is. Karen uh, Erdman will be offering a stewardship moment later in the service. I also want to point out that you'll want to have access to this insert uh, for our first two hymns. Our liturgist is Sophia Broadbent Bell. Sophia is a sophomore at Anley High School. She finished her volleyball season this past week and arrives this morning following last night's homecoming dance and sleepover. Good job, Sophia, being here. <laughs> our handbell ensemble, directed by Karna Roa, is providing our worship music this morning. Thank you, handbells. Pastor Rachel is away this weekend visiting a friend who just had a baby. She will return to the church office on Friday. I'm happy to announce that we have hired two new nursery attendants, Laura Romero and Sarah Sharo. Sharo? Sharo. Uh, and here they are right back here if you want to just turn and say hello. We have, we have not had nursery attendants since before the COVID pandemic hit. So it's been a long time, and we're really happy to have both of you uh, welcome. And if you all have a chance to greet them uh, following the service, uh, please do so. Thank you, both of you. Today, let's see, find my place again. Um, oh, I want to let you know that during worship, Laura and Sarah will be in the fireside room to draw and play quietly with any children who would like to do that. We are not offering Wondering Circle today due to lack of leaders, uh, and so that gives me the opportunity to say to you to strengthen our children's ministry by being trained as a leader. Contact Pastor Rachel. Hello to those of you who are joining us online. Please leave a message in the chat or simply like the video so that we can know that you were with us uh, today. To access the worship bulletin, announcements, or to make an offering, go to our website, uccseb.org. At Community Church, we love seeing new faces and learning new names. If you're worshiping with us, for the first or second time, would you just simply wave so we can have a chance to see you? Hello, and, and greet you. Welcome, welcome. Good to see you. Paula Pierce waved, but we've seen her before, but maybe not in a little while. It's good to see you, Paula. Following the service, we hope everyone will join us together, not in the courtyard, but just across the way in Fellowship Hall uh, for our kinship time, followed by Faith Formation Hour at 11.15. The bell will ring when it's time to move to Faith Formation programs. For those who are here in the sanctuary, please sign and pass along the black attendance pad. It's located on the inner aisle. Uh, pass it along to others that are in your row, and then if it can make its way back toward the center, that way the ushers can come down and easily retrieve those. If you are visiting, uh, we'd love uh, contact information so that we can be in touch with you. The announcement insert in the bulletin out outlines upcoming events in the life of the church. I encourage you to look that over and even to bring it home, but I will highlight a few items uh, during Faith Formation Hour today, we uh, continue with our beginning meditation uh, class led by Mary Culberson. Today, I think she's making a slight uh, shift beyond some of the basics into uh, focusing on some deeper aspects of meditation, but anybody can come, even if you haven't come to the class before. Uh, uh, beginners are always welcome. And then in the fireside room during Faith Formation Hour today, our um, our moderator, Bob Curtis, will be leading a church chat on revisiting our open and affirming statement, uh, wanting to update our open and affirming statement uh, to be uh, uh, as inclusive as it can be. Um, we were going to have intergenerational open gym, but again, we don't have a deep bench in terms of trained leaders to do that. So if the Spirit's putting it on your heart uh, to be trained so that we can uh, call on you uh, as, a, as a leader for those kinds of programs, uh, please contact Pastor Rachel. A few other items you'll notice um, uh, next week's Faith Formation Hour on the second page, uh, including a description of the church chat, which will be led by Susan Olson, uh, around, uh, who's a financial advisor as well as a church member around charitable giving. There's a new women's discussion group that is starting. More details in your bulletin. 
And the youth group Saturday uh, of service is coming up this coming Saturday, uh, as well as the deadline to sign up for June's uh, high school salt trip to Tijuana uh, for those who are currently in ninth through 12th grade. A few more announcements. Uh, before now and November 5th, we are asking every member and friend of Community Church to make a financial pledge in support of the 2024 local ministry and wider mission of this congregation. Our goal is to gather at least 140 pledges, totaling $400,000 in support of our 2024 local church ministry and an additional 400,000, sorry, 40,000 in support of our wider mission and our progress is on the back uh, page of your bulletin insert. Uh, if you have not received a pledge packet, they are available on the welcome table in the narthex. Pledge cards are also available there as well as in the pews. So if you just forgot yours today, just reach out your hand. It's sticking up out of the Bible and you can use that. You'll be invited to bring your pledge card forward during the time of offering right up here onto the chancel and to place it into the basket on our communion table. Today I want to just simply highlight uh, one of the questions in the frequently asked question sheet in the pledge packet, and that is, how much should I pledge? And that is an important personal decision to make prayerfully in conversation with others in your household and with God. Of course, your pledge should be based on your unique financial situation and should also reflect the value this church community has for you. And there are a few suggestions in there, um, including uh, thinking about it as a percentage of your income or available uh, assets. Uh, comparative, comparing to other things that you might spend money on. Your daily espresso drink might cost $5 or $1,825 a year. Or a week-long vacation might cost $5,000. How does your gift to the church compare with other ways that you use your money? Also, um, another way is share-based. You could, you could do the math. We're trying to raise $440,000 with 140 pledges. You could do the math to find out what the average is and where you might uh, fall in that. The final uh, way of thinking about giving we called grace-filled. Grace it's whatever you give, we will just trust that that is just right and will be just enough. At this time, I invite our handbell ensemble to come forward and to bring us into a spirit of praise as we worship the living and loving God. Thank you. 
Good morning. Looking to your bulletin, please respond to me as we begin our worship with a poem by Wendell Berry. Hate has no world. The people of hate must try to possess the world of love, for it is the only world. It is heaven and earth, but as lonely, eager hate possesses it, it disappears. It never did exist, and hate must seek another world that love has made. Our opening hymn is found on the insert in your bulletin. We'll sing verses 1 and 4 of God, whose giving knows no ending. Please rise and let us sing. Friends, may the peace of Christ be with you and also with you. I invite you to take a few moments turning to your neighbors and sharing a sign of Christ's peace.
I have a feeling people heard Pastor Rachel would be away. I invite any children who are here to please come forward. Zoe. I invite Zoe to come forward for the children's message. Actually, if Abby and Dylan, who I just met today, want to come all the way up here, you don't have to, but if you want to come up, you can come up for our children's message. Yay! All right. Yes. One of our nursery attendants, Sarah, has two kiddos, and here they come. Here they come. Welcome. Yay. Yay. Welcome, welcome. Good morning. Good morning. That was a long jog. You did a great job. Well, can we kind of sit? I'll sit here so I can talk to you in a little circle. Um, how many of you like to draw? Does anybody like to draw? What's that? Circles. circles? Yeah, I was going to ask. Circle wish. Circle wish. Yeah, what, what kind of things do you like to draw? Rainbows, okay. I like to sketch. Sketch? Mm hmm. Yellow jackets. Yellow jackets, yeah. They sting you. They sting you. Oh, and you, but you like to draw them? You like to draw them and color them? Yeah. yeah. That's what? I'm, what? I'm, I had a bee sting a long time ago. You had a bee sting a long time ago, yeah. Sometimes it's good to draw things that we might be afraid of or that hurt us once. Or we might like to draw pictures of people I that we I like. Was or washing my feet and yeah. I was picking on Victoria. Yep. And I was all of, and we got to sit on it. Yep. And then um, I washed my feet. Mm hmm. Yeah. And you had paint on your feet? Yeah. Yeah, and you washed your feet, okay. And, and then the feet, a mosquito, a bathtub. A mosquito yeah. bit you? In the bathtub. In the bathtub. And then, wow. and then it, it, it just licked my blood in a bug bite. That was mine. Wow, that is an exciting story. You could even draw that story out. Wow, I could imagine. Can you all imagine that? You're yeah. You're washing paint off your feet in the bathtub, and a mosquito comes and stings you. Yeah, that's quite a story. Well, hey, I, uh, I have something that is inside this bag that I wanted to show you. Uh, there is air in here, but in addition to air, uh, uh, what is this? What do you think that is? A coin. A coin. And can you tell what, what is the picture that's engraved? It's not drawn, but it's engraved, like it's etched on that coin. Can you tell? person? What part of a person? Their head. Their head. Their yep. Head. Yep. This is a picture, because uh, this is a coin from New Zealand, and this is a picture of Queen Elizabeth's head on the front. That was from the crown. Yeah, from the crown, right. Yep. So that's a picture of, uh, of the queen. Now, is this picture, um, is this really the queen right no. here? No. It's just a picture of her, right? If, she, if that were her, she'd be flat, and she's not, she's not flat. Actually, she has, uh, she has died recently, um, but we still have pictures of her, but that's not the same uh, as her. Well, in our Bible story today, uh, some people came up to Jesus, and they wanted to trick him. And they said, uh, hey, who should we give our money to? Should we give our money to the emperor, who's like the king? Should we give our money to the king, or should we give uh, our money to God? And Jesus said, well, you know, what, do you, what money are you talking about? Do you have anything? And they, they reached in their pocket and they took out a coin. And it had not the queen, but it had a picture of the king, of the emperor on it. And Jesus said, well, if it's got the king's picture on it, then you can give that to the king. It must belong to him. But you should give everything that belongs to God to God. Now, what belongs to God? Everything. Everything. Including money, including the way we treat each other, including, what's that? God's rich. Yeah, God's rich because God owns and has and loves and appreciates everything. And everything we have first came from God. And so Jesus is like, yeah, if you want to give back to the king the thing that has his picture on it, that's fine. But give everything to God because God gave us everything. Can we uh, uh, close our eyes? And I'm going to say a little prayer. 
God, we thank you for beautiful drawings of rainbows and, uh, and even of um, uh, mosquito bites <laughs> and all the things uh, that we love. We thank you for all of these images yellow and yellow jackets. Um, and we also thank you that, that we are created in your image. You imagined us and you brought us into being and you love us and you've given us everything we've had and you ask us uh, to return everything to you as an act of love. And we pray all this in Jesus' name, remembering the words he taught his disciples and teaches us to pray by saying, Our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may now return and either in, return to your families or back to the fireside room. Thank you so much for coming up and sharing the children's message with me. Our next hymn is found in the insert in your order of worship. In body or spirit, please stand and sing. We cannot own the sunlit sky. Please be seated. This morning's gospel lesson comes from the 22nd chapter of Matthew. You'll remember for the last few weeks we've been hearing stories from this portion of Matthew. Um, and you should know that what happens today happens essentially on the the Monday of what we call Holy Week, so the day after Palm Sunday. So the tensions have really arisen. Jesus has entered Jerusalem as part of a large parade, and then he has gone into the temple, 
He has overturned the tables of the money changers, and he has brought attention to himself and to his movement. And the leaders, those who are vested with power and, in, and um, who want things to stay the same, are, are threatened by this disruption, and so they're finding ways to um, expose him as a fraud or to test him uh, and to humiliate him. And so this is the next effort at doing that. From Matthew 22, verses 15 to 22. Then the Pharisees went and plotted to entrap him in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him, along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with truth and show deference to no one, for you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us then what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. Then he said to them, Whose head is this, and whose title? They answered, The emperor's. Then he said to them, Give, therefore, to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him and went away. Here ends the reading of the gospel. May, the, may these words be for us a lamp for our feet and a light for our path. Amen. Amen. While we gather here in the sanctuary, the participants on our annual men's retreat are finishing up out in Occidental, uh, no doubt enjoying the rain under the redwoods. We spent the weekend talking about death. And it dawned on us how countercultural that was. Not only was it countercultural that we were talking about death, but we were a group of men talking about death in a vulnerable kind of way from our hearts, exposing our, our fears and our hopes, uh, our misgivings, our confusions, and our questions. Uh, and not only that, it was even more countercultural because we were enjoying doing it. We were enjoying being together and having those conversations. So I ask a blessing on those who are there today finishing up their time with, uh, with worship and with a final meal, uh, even as we gather here in the mothership uh, for our Sunday morning worship. Some of you may have noticed that we now have a clock in the room. It's right there on the back. Part of the prompting of that was that with our new faith formation hour, there is a need to be a bit more cognizant of time, which is why some of you have noticed that when you're arriving, when you usually do, things have already begun. I've, I've noticed you. Just might suggest you might also want to just shift by about three to five minutes, but I'll leave that to you. When I look at the back of the sanctuary and I see the clock, I hear the voice of my preaching professor in seminary, Reverend Dr. Peter J. Gomes, who was the uh, minister at Memorial Church in Harvard Yard, and he, he talked with his affect. He called himself an Afro-Saxon. And he said to us once, soon to be preachers, I want you to Take note of the clock. The clock is your friend, and you would do well to mind it. <laughs> you see, he would give us these assignments where we were to preach for 10 minutes. And when we reached the 10-minute point, preaching to the rest of the class, which is about eight or nine of us, and he was sitting there, he would say, thank you. And if we didn't stop, you'd say, very fine, you're finished. <laughs> he was that kind of person. Uh, larger than life, funny, blunt. One of the most blunt things I ever heard him say in that church was about money. 
he got up to give the invitation to the offering. And he said, in order to survive, if not thrive, this church needs your money. And you need to give it. Let us receive our morning offering. <laughs> what I noticed he did with that was not only make us laugh, but he broke the taboo that we have about talking about money, especially talking about money in church, which I don't know if I do as well as he does. Maybe I need to develop an affect. Maybe you would laugh more. But uh, I'll just tell you, from the point of view of a um, local church pastor, uh, one of the things that feels the most uncomfortable but also important is to also break that taboo. And we do that most uh, uh, directly during this time of year when we're having our pledge drive. We, we bring up money. We bring up the fact that we are inviting every single member and friend to make a financial pledge. That is a, an estimate of how much you're going to give to the church in the coming year. And I'll say, if we didn't do that, we would probably, we'd start, we'd probably have to put a for sale sign out in front of the church. There's no church without you all, us all, making pledges to the church so that we know that we can pay for the electricity, pay for our staff, pay for the maintenance of our instruments, all of those kinds of things, do all of our outreach programs, send our adult uh, disaster re re relief team to paradise for one more year to do good work, and uh, some of them are back here among us. We can't do any of that without you, without me, without us giving our money to the church. That's what it enables. Our, our money is also our ministry. So I try, to, I try to break down some of these taboos because if we think about it, we've got a lot of emotions attached to money. I can remember one time um, early on in my career, I had this idea that I would, I would show what kind of emotional attachment we had to our money by taking a dollar bill and in front of the congregation, tearing it into a bunch of little pieces and then flinging it. Now, I didn't do that just now, but could you feel it a little bit? Do we have an emotional attachment, even to a dollar bill? We have attachments in our own life, our own life history, around our own um, shame or worry, our sense of uh, scarcity. Many of us have experienced money as a means by which others convey love to us. Or we have sometimes inherited that, and we use money to convey our love or appreciation of someone else. Now, I'm not saying that that's necessarily bad. I'm just saying there's a lot of emotion attached to money. And I think that those disciples and Herodians who came to Jesus on that day, they knew that. They knew that they weren't bringing up some kind of neutral subject with Jesus. They were bringing up something that had some emotion attached to it. Now, Sophia, you probably know that um, some people have done some studies of what Jesus talk, has, talks about in his ministry. And the thing that he talks about more than any other subject in his ministry in all the Gospels is the kingdom of God, or in Matthew's Gospel, the kingdom of heaven. But the second most common thing that Jesus talks about is money. So somehow, in Jesus' ministry, there's a connection between the kingdom of heaven, between God, between the spirit that has, has come upon him and upon his ministry and upon his followers in what he is trying to open up for people around, uh, around the presence of God in their lives and how we think, how we feel, and how we treat money. And so they came to test him that day. They came to test him, and there were uh, two factions here coming to test him. Uh, there were the Pharisees. The Pharisees were uh, that group of Jews with which Jesus most closely identified. I've even heard that a few scholars say Jesus himself was a Pharisee, in the sense that he uh, took very seriously uh, the study of the Torah. He took very seriously his Jewish identity. He took very seriously his uh, relationship uh, with the patriarchs and the matriarchs. He took very ser seriously uh, 
the, 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 the book of Deuteronomy, that, that, that law that, that teaches about how we are to treat our neighbor. And the Pharisees were very much against the Roman occupiers. They were against the empire. They wanted nothing more than for the Romans to leave once and for all. But they were under the boot heel of the Romans who were militarily much more powerful. But there was another group. Did you hear the, the other group that they brought along with them that day? Did you hear it? The Herodians. The Herodians were another group of Jews very different from the Pharisees. The Herodians were allies of Herod Antipas, the son of the great King Herod that we hear about in the Nativity story. So the Herodians were those who were actually accommodating the Roman Empire because the Romans let them uh, uh, continue to uh, lead what happened in and around the temple. And so the Herodians were interested in making peace with the Romans. The Herodians were interested in making peace with the Ro Romans so that they could maintain their influence. So you see, they found some common cause in wanting to go challenge Jesus because he was equally challenging to the Pharisees and to the Herodians. And they asked him a question that would make him choose which of them he would be allied with. And the question is, should we pay taxes to the emperor or not? If he said, yes, we should pay taxes to the emperor, he would be siding with the... Somebody say Herodians? Herodians. If he said, no, we shouldn't be paying anything to the emperor, he'd be siding with the... Pharisees, in one way or another, he would please some, but he would infuriate the other side. They were putting him in a sticky situation. Maybe you have been in a situation like that where you realize someone is coming at you with a gotcha question. It is a no-win situation. Damned if you do, damned if you don't. But Jesus... He finds a way out of it. He's so endearing in this way. Because <laughs> you wonder, if you just read it up to that point, you're like, what is he going to say? What is he going to do? And the first thing he does is not say anything, which I want to commend to all of us. When somebody comes at you with a gotcha question, start out by not saying anything. You don't have to say anything. Give it a little moment. Check in with yourself. How am I feeling? How, how do I want to react right now without thinking? Just notice that. And then when you're ready to talk, take one more pause and another breath. The person who gave you the gotcha question will be frustrated. Because the whole point of a gotcha question is to get you. But if you breathe and you pause and you wait, they can't get you yet. So then Jesus says, do you have a coin? brilliant. Because if he says, do you have a coin? It means he doesn't have a coin. He's not holding on to one of these coins that has a graven image on it, which means a blasphemous image. We talked about the Ten Commandments a couple weeks ago. He is saying, I don't have a coin in my pocket, but you must. So let me see what this coin looks like. And so they give him a coin. And he says, well, whose face is on it? And they say, well, it's the emperor's. And he doesn't just say whose face is on it. He says, and what is the title that is there? And the title that would have been on one of those denarii was not only the, 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 the face of the emperor, but it would have said his title, which was, interestingly, son of God. Or son of the uh, Caesar Augustus, the great Caesar. So there's a graven image and also a blasphemous claim about who has total authority right there etched on the coin that came out of their pocket. And so then Jesus says, well, why don't you give to the emperor what is the emperor's and give to God what is God's? I mean, right here, I'm kind of just telling the children's message over again, right? That if our money has an image on it, which all of our money does, then let's give the money to the person whose image is on the money. But give to God what belongs to God, which is everything. 
all of our lives, all of our devotions, all of our uh, relationships, uh, all of our commitments, all of our values, all of our energy, all of our food, all of our hospitality, all of our, all of our, all of our, it all belongs, including the money. I think that's the twist. The twist is that Jesus plays this card that just puts everything in a much larger frame and their reaction is that they are amazed and don't know what to say next. But I want to just think for a second with you about this idea of an image being on the coin. You see, the coin has an image on it, and Jesus says, okay, give back to the emperor that which has the image of the emperor on it. But conversely, he's saying, give back to God that which has the image of God in it. And so who is he talking about? He's talking about Joyce and Johnny and Stuart and Michael and Alvin and Dylan and Marlene and Sarah and Greg and Dale and Steve and Nancy. Give yourselves. You, you are the ones in which God has imprinted God's own image. And the world wants to talk you out of it. It tries every single day in as many ways as it can find to talk you out of the fact that you are the bearer of God's very image. How much time do we spend looking at screens every single day, entranced by them, entranced by the images that are on them, images that are always trying to tell us what image we are reflecting? We are reflected in those screens that we look at, whether they're the, the cable news that we're looking at or the social media that we're looking at or the email that somebody sent to you where they told you this, that, or the other thing that you think might be true, but it doesn't ring true deep within. The screens are trying to tell us in whose or in what image we are created. They're like, they're like the coins or the icons uh, or the idols of our time. But Jesus, Jesus is constantly inviting us back to recognize that those images reflect back to us falseness, incompleteness, even lies. Because what Jesus is about in his entire ministry, is reminding all of his disciples, all who would have the ears to hear and the eyes to see, that we are reflected. We are reflections of God's own image. And I've heard Jesus described as both a window and a mirror. Jesus is a window in that we see through Jesus into God's own uh, essence. By seeing through Jesus, we see who God is and what God values. But Jesus also reflects back to us our own humanity and our own divinity. Not a graven image, but the image of a living being reminding us that we are still, no matter how many voices try to convince us otherwise, we are still human. I think Mother Teresa had this in mind when she went into that CEO's office in the high-rise uh, building in New York. Do you know the story? She was visiting New York. She was, uh, 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 she was visiting some of the convents, and she was also doing some fundraising. And she went to the CEO's office. I won't say who. And she went up there, and she sat in the big plush leather seat across from the very large desk, and the CEO had some bad news. We're very sorry. We're very sorry, but we have... We have allocated all of our funds, all of the charitable funds that our corporation has, uh, has allocated for the coming year. We've already committed that. We have nothing left. And Mother Teresa said, let us pray. 
And she prayed for the generosity of the CEO and of the corporation. And she lifted up all of the people that she and her sisters serve in Calcutta. And she opened her eyes and, and the CEO looked flabbergasted and amazed and said, I, I don't think you understand, um, uh, uh, Mother Teresa, but we, we have already allocated all of the funds. Here's the process we went by. And I can give you some of the examples of some of the charities that we have, uh, that we have supported. And I, I just, I have to tell you, there's, there is... I, my hands are tied. There is no money left to give. To which Mother Teresa said, let us pray. And she continued to pray. She continued to pray for the CEO and for all of the workers of that corporation and all of the stockholders and all of the people that this money would serve and all of who would benefit by it and all of her sisters whom she loved and all of the children with disabilities who were served by their ministry. And she opened her eyes and the CEO tried one more time. I, I, I really don't know what to say to you. I, 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 I've told you a couple times we have no more money. Uh, uh, the, the rest of it we owe to all of the, the shareholders and we really... I, I, I don't know what to tell you anymore. Um, and Mother Teresa looked at him, saw God's reflection in him, remembered that every person that she served is a reflection of God's love. And she said, let us pray. And that third prayer apparently did it. That CEO just wanted to get rid of her at that point. But she walked out with the check. Because she knew before going in there that even he was a reflection of God's own being. Even we are a reflection of God's own love. I hope we can remember that as we go throughout our week. Remember it even when it's hardest. Amen. When I was asked to, uh, I'm Karen Erdman, <clears throat> and when I was asked to speak today about why I give to the church, it was an easy yes. Because I find value in attending this church, and um, I, uh, you know, in many organizations, as I was reflecting on different churches I've uh, attended over the years, I see that an organization is made up by the people who show up in the organization and how they show up. And as a community church, I have tons of gratitude for everything that goes on here. I'm fairly new to the community, but I find that Benjamin and Rachel's messages are quite inspiring. They challenge social norms <clears throat> and the way things are done. I find that the messages have historical content that inspires me and has me thinking about where do they come from and reflecting on my life and our struggles as humans. And I take them into my life during the week and I feel like they improve my quality of life. I love that we encourage sustainability in this church and that we bless the waters every year. That matches my values of making sure we take care of the environment. I appreciate the opportunity to contribute to the wider community of Sebastopol, Sonoma County, and even throughout the wide world, um, that we have a sock drive, that we have an opportunity to give, uh, go out and buy um, personal items for people who are unhoused over the holidays. 
I've enjoyed the opportunity to participate in the women's retreats, um, and I love the music. I love that we have lots of um, different people sharing music every week. Sometimes it's the piano, uh, the violins, guitar, and don't you love the bells? Yeah. The bells inspire me. So while so many of these programs, oh, I also appreciate how inclusive we are as a community, that there's opportunities for people of all different kinds of um, ways of expressing themselves and their humanness uh, here, including the LGBTQ community, that we offer showers for people who are unhoused. Um, I feel like there's so many different programs that run on um, volunteerism, but as uh, Benjamin said earlier, that it always takes, it takes money to keep the foundation going. So I give because I appreciate that this community church walks its talk and um, that I get to be a part of it and participate. Thank you. Community is a place where gifts are shared and celebrated. At this time, I invite all who have prepared their pledge cards to bring them forward and to place them into the basket up here on the communion table. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together, Lord, with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together, Lord, bind us together in love. The words are in your bulletin. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together, Lord, with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together, Lord, bind us together in love. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together, Lord. With cords that cannot be broken, bind us together, Lord, bind us together, Lord, bind us together in love, bind us together, Lord, bind us together, Lord, with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together, Lord, bind us together in love, bind us together in love. As we ponder our offering, let us remember what Jesus taught us, to give to God the things that belong to God. The Handbell Ensemble will make its offering of music as the ushers come among us to serve. I invite you to put your gift into the plate or simply to touch the plate as a sign of your gift. Let us worship God with our offering.
take my life, God, let it be consecrated faithfully. Take my moments and my days, let them flow in ceaseless praise. Take my love and help it grow, let my love in overflow. Take me now and help me be part of Christ's community. Let us pray. We trust you, Holy One to multiply the blessings these gifts represent. Through this community, pour out your love and grace on those who long to hear a word of hope. In Christ we pray, amen. Please be seated. As our prayer practice this morning, I'm going to invite you to do something that we've done before. It's a little different. I want you to find someone near you and take a minute each to share a prayer, joy, or concern, just something that is on your heart. And if you're one of those outgoing people, you might look around for the person who's like, why are they asking me to do this? And you can offer to join them and do this. So um, do that now. Find a person. It might be behind you. It might be next to you. If you haven't moved to the next person, make a, make a shift now. All right, now we're going to move from sharing with, with each other to praying for each other. So now just take a minute, and you can pray silently or quietly so the other person can hear you. We're just going to pray for each other for a minute. Let us pray. God, your word tells us that when we pray like this, our thoughts, our words are lifted up to you like sweet-smelling incense that is pleasing to you. But God, we don't only want to please you. Sometimes we want to shake you awake because we want to, we want to mobilize you to come alongside us as we act in Jesus' name to bring about a more just and peaceful world. And so it is in Christ's name we ask it. Amen.
Our closing hymn is number 655 in the hymnal, In Body or Spirit, Please Stand and Sing, Community of Christ. Verses 1 and 3. Community of Christ, who makes the cross your own, live out your creed and risk your life for God alone. The God who wears your face to belong, whose children are of every race and every song. Community of Christ, through whom the word must sound, cry out for joy. And for peace, the whole world round. Disarm the powers that war, and all that can destroy. Turn palms to bread and tears of anguish. now may the grace of God Almighty, the love of Jesus Christ, and the power of the Holy Spirit be with us all both now and forevermore. Amen.